This video introduces SpaceGen's PhotoFit feature, and today I'll be showing you how to use it effectively and how to get the best possible results for your project. The first thing many people want to do with SpaceGen Modeler is to input a photograph of a face. To begin, select the PhotoFit tab on the far right. You'll save yourself a whole lot of trouble if you start with a good source photograph. Stick to a passport style, full face looking straight ahead showing a neutral facial expression. Please note that FaceGen source photos should be at least 500 pixels high, that the larger the source photo the more detail you'll get, and JPEG, TIFF, BMP, and TGA file formats are all okay as FaceGen source photos. Click Next after hitting the PhotoFit tab to start. Please avoid using source photos if the source photo was taken in direct sunlight, I will admit that it's a sexy look, but glasses are a bad option for PhotoFit. Ladies and gentlemen, the three S's, sunlight, smiling, and squinting, all very bad for PhotoFit. Full frontal nudity is also not a very good idea with PhotoFit. Meanwhile, back at the application. Right, once you have a good source photo and you have selected the PhotoFit tab, hit load and begin loading your source photos. Now with Modeler, it is possible to generate a 3D model from a single frontal photograph. You can upload profile photographs, but they are optional. Using left and right profile photos will render your model's profile with greater accuracy, but keep in mind that PhotoFit will require extra processing time if you decide to use profile photos. The next step after loading your source photos is to place small green crosshairs at certain key points, called fiducial points, on your image. By doing so, we are telling Modeler where the face actually is. Use the left mouse button while hovering between the green points to move them all. Use the right mouse button to scale the points. Once they're close to the guideline on the right, move over each point and drag it to adjust. Don't worry if the face appears small on the screen. Hitting next will give you a chance to fine tune the points. However, if the relative size of the face in your source photo is large enough, this fine tuning stage is omitted, as it is here. When you have finished placing your points, click next to advance. We recommend that you leave the preserved facial hair option on unless you specifically want to remove a mustache or a beard from your source photo. Select Start Now to begin PhotoFit. While we wait for the calculation to complete, I'd like to show some examples derived from the poor quality photos seen earlier in the presentation. All three results show strong shadows across the face and particularly distortions around the eyes. These features will complicate any later editing you may wish to perform. The PhotoFit calculation should take anywhere from 20 seconds to a minute per photo depending on the speed and number of cores in your computer. And we're done with a very satisfactory result. Save your PhotoFit model as an FG file before starting any editing. Loading that FG file in the future will let you avoid repeating the PhotoFit procedure again. On a final note, I'd like to show a few examples of what FaceGen is not intended for. Avoid black and white source photos because the 3D model created will only be black and white, as we see here with Comrade Lenin. I show this sketch of Anne Boleyn by Hans Holbein the Younger, not to say that a sketch won't necessarily work with PhotoFit, but rather that because it is in three-quarter view, it will not work as a PhotoFit source photo. If you do try to load a three-quarter view image, you will likely get an error message stating incorrect placement of markers. The same goes for this mosaic portrait of Alexander the Great, and also this marble statue of the Emperor Augustus. And finally, no matter how cute your little fluffy is, pets will not work with PhotoFit. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit www.facegen.com.